Yeah, so um, <coughs> it's nice to see some faces that I know anyway. That's lovely. I'd just like to pick up, I'm, Sheikh, thank you very much for your prayer. Um, and it's always one thing that struck me enormously whenever I've gone to a mosque or met uh, Muslim groups, um, somebody will always stand up and start with a prayer. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. And certainly Brother Daniel, um, in his life, uh, it's ten, uh, 10 years since he's died, um, one of the things that he did do uh, was compile uh, prayers from the various different religious traditions, uh, as well as passages of scripture and so on. Um, so it's very <coughs> important to us, the prayer. And I think that, you know, when we're talking about radicalization and where we go and how we go about it, um, certainly people of faith uh, should use prayer more, perhaps, than we do. And uh, perhaps we should find times when we can share prayer together. Um, I mean, I don't know what faith traditions uh, you, you belong to, but uh, Sheikh's prayer, which is very much from the Islamic tradition, uh, we could probably yeah. all share and pray. Uh, on, on the question of prayer, um, it's uh, very much a personal thing here, but um, there was a, a prayer which I must say I do not pray regularly, um, but it was just something that somebody sent me um, some time ago. And I would like to read it because I think it's a, a good way to start. Um, very simple. Uh, it's focused within the Christian tradition, if you like, but I think it's open to everybody. Um, but, and, and, and if Christians pray this, that would be great. <clears throat> Open my eyes to the workings of your spirit in the life and the faith of everyone I encounter today. Open my ears and make me willing to listen to their stories. Help me understand how they're all part of your story with humanity. Open my heart so that I'm able to love you in my neighbour. Talking to Nick earlier on, we were just sort of saying, you know, um, well, conversation that religions have been divisive, religions have caused trouble and war, and um, I, I remember quite clearly Pope Francis very recently in a message of peace that he sent out at the beginning of this year, um, said, in my understanding, no religion pre preaches violence or war. In fact, um, no religion would go that way whatsoever. The message of religion, all religions, is peace and harmony and um, happy coexistence, as it were. It's funny, I mean, it's going to be a bit random, this, because um, I said to my son, who's about 30, one of my sons is about 30, um, and I said to him, I'm supposed to be going to talk something on radicalization this evening. And his immediate answer was, he started talking to me about free radicals. <laughs> <laughs> and he went on about free radicals for quite some time. And I know nothing at all, very little about chemistry or physiology. Maybe people know a lot more about it. Um, but it was interesting that he was saying, you know, it's free radicals. Um, uh, are beneficial because they can combat bacteria and disease and various other things, um, but equally they can lead to cancer and everything else. And what we need to do um, is to ensure that uh, um, you know the antibodies, um, the, what, what what they call not antibodies, um, antioxidants uh, are necessary to stabilise them, and they can be found mainly through vitamin C and E, and that's our five a day, if you like, fruits and vegetables. And I think in many ways that's what we need as people of faith is, is our five a day, is our uh, antioxidants to stabilize the free radicals that exist in us. Um, but, but with Nick, um, he was talking about, you know, first and foremost, we are individuals, we're beings. And that was a thought that came to mind as well. Um, if we went to the core of our very being, we would all find the presence of the divine within us wherever we come from, whether we have a religion or we don't have a religion, whether we believe in God, we don't believe in God, there is that fundamental goodness within us, um, at least I think it is, that ultimate re re reality which needs 
fostering, which needs nourishing, which needs developing. And of course, we have different ways of doing that. As people of faith, we can do that through prayer, through worship, through sharing in the community, through doing things with um, um, helping us to foster that encouragement. So it's important, the formation that we have, the education that we give our children, the family situation is particularly important to nurture uh, good behaviour and positive thoughts. Um, and of course, this radicalisation that we talk about, unfortunately again, it's always mentioned, referred to in very negative terms. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's a radical is, <coughs> what we're referring to is violent extremism, in fact, isn't it? Uh, that type of thing, something that leads to violence. And yes, there are plenty of examples of radicalisation through the centuries where people have resorted to violence, sometimes possibly justly. Uh, I think the response to Nazi, uh, Nazism, uh, fascism in general, um, a response without perhaps a lot of thought about it, it was a natural response to defend other people who were being massacred in different things. Whether resorting to violence was the answer, I'm not totally sure, but that was a response. However, our scripture does not talk to us about resorting to violence. Um, from, I'm, a, I'm a Roman Catholic, um, so within the Christian tradition, if you like, and our scripture says very clearly, I mean, on Sunday, Sunday, uh, this Sunday, most of the Christian churches listened to the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus' is teaching to would-be followers and a few people that he'd already spoken to. And if you like, it's a program. It's a program for daily living. And I would say it was very radical. And I would also say that those people who um, followed that program right. like, were radicalised. Um, and it certainly occurs to me quite recently, just a, another little comment, um, you all know Mother Teresa and the work that she did in Calcutta. That was a response to the Gospel um, on how we should behave. And so she went, and I don't think she intended to have hundreds of other sisters who do the same work, men and women who lay people who were doing the same, the same work. Um, but they had done, they were radicalised. So here is, very shortly, the Sermon on the Mount, I'm not going to read the whole Sermon on the Mount, but amongst the Sermon on the Mount, it says quite clearly that we should not just love our neighbour, but love our enemies and do good to those who hurt us. <clears throat> That's a powerful message, a very difficult one to live through. And, you know, we can only do that through the unity that we have with one another. And when Jesus talks about loving everybody, loving your enemy, he means everybody without exception. He just doesn't mean just the other Catholics or the other Christians or, or anything else, but everybody, irrespective of who or what they are. In fact, I think that the message goes beyond that. It's sort of love all creation as well as your, your neighbour. So let me just remind you what the Beatitudes are. I'm sure you all know them, but it is very radical. <coughs> Translations vary. Some people say happy are the poor in spirit, others is blessed are the poor in spirit or fortunate. A slight aside there. Um, I was talking to, to, to a Hindu um, scholar some time about things and he quoted this wonderful word ananda, which means bliss, bliss, happiness if you like. Um, so blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. <coughs> Blessed are they who mourn, for they'll be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they'll be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. <coughs> Blessed are the peacemakers, they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you 
and utter every kind of evil against you because of me, falsely. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. <coughs> and of course he goes on further, and amongst his other statements he quotes the golden rule, treat other people as you would like to be treated yourself, uh, and most religions have that rule within it. But the kingdom of heaven that he talks about is something that we create with the help of God. Right. We create it. We create it by the way we behave with one another. We create it by our attitudes towards one another. Um, we create it by our personal life, our witness. I was at a meeting of um, Bangladeshi Muslims last year, 800 uh, or so Muslims, very, very interesting. And um, one young Muslim asked um, the, the speaker, what can we do about Islamophobia? Is there anything that we can do? There was a lot of discussion and debate and various things and lots of things were said. But at the end of the day, and I thought it was very powerful, the imam turned around and sort of said, be the best Muslim you can possibly be. Right. And people will learn by your behaviour, mm -hmm. your attitude, mm -hmm. that you don't mean harm to anybody, you mean peace and justice to everybody. And I think that fundamentally, I think that for each and every one of us, whether we're Baha'is or Buddhists or Jews or Christians, Zoroastrians, whatever, if we live our faith to the core, to the very essence of our being, um, people will see that's the way forward. And we have a very, very important role to play because we do have that spiritual dimension which perhaps is lacking in society. And people need to be aware that religion is for peace. Religion is not for conflict and war.